Hi guys, I'm Joe James and today I want to explain how the radix sort algorithm works and I want to explain some of the benefits of the radix sort as well as how to implement it in Python. The radix sort is a very fast algorithm and it's mainly for sorting integers. So let's take a look at how it works. We're going to create 10 lists first or buckets you could call them if you want. Radix sort is sometimes called bucket sort and we're going to start with the least significant bit, which is the digit, the rightmost digit in an integer. And then we're going to append each key. We're going to call these numbers that we're trying to sort here, the keys. And we're going to um, append each key to its respective list. And then we're going to flatten this into a one dimensional list and then repeat that for each digit. So we'll start with the rightmost digit, then the middle digit, and then the leftmost digit. So basically three iterations of this create 10 lists, uh, move each one into its appropriate bucket, and then flatten it. And we'll do that three iterations because in this case we have three digits in the longest uh, item in the list. So let's look in more detail at how that works. So here's a list of six integers that we're trying to sort, and we're going to look at the rightmost digit only, the first pass here, right? So here it's five, two, two, five, so this is five, zero, this is bucket number zero. Bucket number one, two, three, four, five. So in bucket number five, we added 225, right? We just appended it to the beginning of the list. Next, we look at 315. Uh, guess what? That the, the rightmost digit is also a five, so we append that onto the same bucket. So now look, 225 and 315 are in the order that they were in this list here, right? 225 comes first and then 315. Next we look at 221. That goes into the one bucket because the rightmost digit is a one. And then 311 also goes into the ones bucket because the rightmost digit is a one. And then we have 326 which goes into the six bucket. And then 216 that goes into the six bucket. So now we sorted all six of these integers into the appropriate bucket based on the rightmost digit. So the next step is to take this, this is essentially, it's a list of lists, right? It's a two dimensional list. And we're gonna flatten that into a one dimensional list. And we're gonna keep these items in the same order that they're already in. So 221 is first, 311 is second, 225 is next, 315 is next, 326, and then 216, right? So all we did is flatten this list of lists into a one-dimensional list of items. And this is the flattened result. So now we have a list again, and we're gonna repeat this exercise, but using the middle digit, right? 221, we're gonna look at the two here. So let's see, zero, one, two. We create 10 new buckets that are all empty. We move 221 into this first, uh, the bucket number two here. Move uh, 311 into the ones bucket, 225 into the twos bucket because the middle digit is a two, 315 into the ones bucket because the middle digit is a one, 326 into the twos bucket because the middle digit is a two, and then 216 into the uh, ones bucket. So we've sorted them all into the appropriate buckets and they all happen to go into the one and twos bucket. Now we're going to flatten that. So we take them in order, 311, then 315, then 216, you see, and then 221, 225, and 326, right? So we flattened our list of lists into a single dimensional list here, and we're going to do one more iteration using the leftmost digit. So we're only going to look at the leftmost digit here, the most significant bit. And we're going to start with the leftmost number. 311. Well, that's a 3, so 0, 1, 2, 3. We add 311 into the threes bucket. 315, we're going to pin that onto the end of the threes bucket. 216, we're going to add that to the twos bucket. 221, we add that into the twos bucket. 225, we add that into the twos bucket. And 326, we add that into the threes bucket. And that's it for our sorting into buckets for the third iteration here. Next, we just need to flatten this. So we flatten this list of lists into a one-dimensional list, and it should be fully sorted. So if we look through it 
216-221-225-311-315-326. They are indeed fully sorted now. So we did three iterations again because our longest item in our original list has only three digits. So the number of iterations we do depends upon the length of the longest item in our starting list. So that is how the algorithm radix sort works. It's, it's also called bucket sort, and you can see why, because we have buckets and we're just adding things to buckets. So in terms of time complexity, the radix sort is big O of n times w, where n is the number of keys or number of items in the list, and w is the length of the longest key. In other words, the number of digits in the longest key. In this case, they all have three digits. But we may have some longer numbers here, right? 21657 would be five digits. So the time complexity becomes n times w. Now the radix sort is extremely fast for large lists of relatively short numeric keys. So if in this case we had three digit keys, we could sort millions of those very, very quickly. Um, for 10 million keys of length eight, it would also be extremely fast, effectively big O of n. Why? Because it would take basically eight loops of 10 million operations. So it effectively becomes a big O of n with a multiplier or a constant of eight. So you're pretty much getting down to a big O of n speed in the best case scenario. Now, on the other hand though, if you have 100 keys, a relatively small number of keys, with a lot of digits in each one, then it effectively becomes big O of n squared. Because 100 times 100 is 10,000, so it would take on the order of 10,000 operations to sort only 100 keys. So relatively slow for sorting a small number of keys that have a whole bunch of digits in them. So there are times when radix sort is optimal and times when it's not. And the beauty of radix sort is that it doesn't do any comparisons. There's no branching, there's no if statements, and this also helps speed up the performance of the radix sort. Because when the processor doesn't have to do branching, it's able to pipeline instructions much faster and execute much faster. So for that reason, the radix sort is extremely fast under the right circumstances. How can we implement this in Python? And by the way, I'll post all this code on my GitHub site so you can download and run the code and play with it all you like. Uh, so let's start with a main function. We'll start a main function and, whoops. And then I'm gonna call the main function. Uh, I typed up a list here already that we're gonna sort. We're gonna call this list A. Uh, we're going to have a couple other sub-functions. Uh, one thing we need to do is get the number of digits. So number of digits is equal to, use a double underscore because it's an internal function, uh, get num digits. That will get the number of digits in the longest integer in our list. And so of course we need to pass in the list to get that. And then after we get the number of digits, we're going to call the radix sort. So the radix sort is going to return the same list, but it's going to be in sorted order. So a equals radix of, and then we'll pass in the list and the num digits. So let me get this, pass that in, boom. And then lastly, we'll print out the sorted list, hopefully. <laughs> so that's some simple test code. Create a list, get the number of digits in the longest integer in that list, call the radix sort on it and then print out the sorted list. Uh, and next, next thing we need to do is write this uh, num digits, get num digits function. So let's see, let's just copy this. So def get num digits of a, let's say max equals zero, that will be the maximum number. We'll call it m instead of max because we're gonna use a function called max. So, and then for item in A, we're gonna iterate through all the items in this list. We're gonna compare them to the max, and if it's greater than the max, then we'll 
we'll update the max. So m equals max of item comma m. So that way it'll compare each item to the max or to the m, which is our max, and it'll uses this built-in Python function called max to take the larger of those two. And then after we finish that for loop, we're going to return uh, the length of the string version of m. So m is our max, we're going to convert that to a string and then just get the length of that string, number of characters in that string. So this is our function. I'll put a little description in there. That's our get number of digits function. Um, let's see, now we need to actually write the rate sort function. So let's insert another cell. Uh, def radix, and we're going to take in a and num digits. And we need two loops, right? We're going to use nested for loops for this. For digit in range, let's see, 0 to uh, num digits. And then uh, inside that, we need to, first thing we need to do is we need to create a list of 10 buckets, right? We'll call this B. This will be kind of like our working list that we are going to co uh, copy the items from A into. So this will be our, our list of empty buckets. Each time through the outer for loop, we're going to reset that to 10 empty buckets. So we'll use a list comprehension for this. We're going to create an empty list for I in range 10 because we need 10 empty buckets. So it's basically a two-dimensional list of 10 empty lists. And then we're going to have an inner for loop for item in A. We're going to iterate through these items in A. So here's the tricky part. What we need to figure out is how to get the correct digit, right, which we're going to use as a list index for B, to append that item to. And uh, we'll do that by, we'll call this num. That will be the list index that we're going to use for b to dump it into the right bucket. So this is a key part here. Uh, num equals item, and we'll do integer division divided by 10 to shave off all the digits to the right, raised to the power digit, and then we'll mod it 10. So that should give us the correct list index for b. And then all we got to do is append the item in there. So let's see, b of num, and then we're going to append. We're always going to add it onto the tail end of the list, uh, item. That will append the item to list b into the correct bucket. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the whole thing. Now, lastly, uh, inside the outer for loop, but outside the inner for loop, we need to flatten this list. And we're going to use a utility function to do that. So we'll reassign the flattened list back to A again. So A equals, let's see, let's call this underscore, underscore flatten um, A. Oh, whoops, B. We're going to pass in B because B is our, our working list. So we'll flatten out list B, and then we'll reassign that to A. That way, when we restart this outer for loop, uh, A will be the kind of modified list after an iteration through that loop. And then after we're finished completely, we'll return A. So that is it. Our radix sort function is pretty short and sweet. We're creating an empty list of 10 lists. We're iterating through those digits, the number of digits we have, which is you know about three, it's gonna be small. And then we're gonna iterate through each item in the list, add it to the correct bucket. And then after that, we're gonna flatten the list and repeat. So that's basically what we're doing. And then we're going to return the sorted list. So now we have a sorted list and we printed out A. Uh, what's one thing we forgot to do though? We still have to write this flatten function. Put that up here, def flatten. And we'll put, uh, we're going to pass in a list to flatten. Um, one thing I want to use for this is we're going to import something. So from func tools, import reduce. This reduce function really does all the work for us. So we're just going to use this reduce function from the functools library. And then our, our flatten function is really simple. 
we just need to return, and then we're going to write a little lambda function inside the reduce here. We don't need these parentheses. R E D U C E reduce boom lambda. Okay, so each time through lambda, we're going to have x comma y, and then we're going to do x plus y, which is going to aggregate these lists. So we're going to iterate through list A that we passed in, which is really list B, and then um, aggregate all these lists together, append one onto the other using the plus function to combine lists. And we, so this is going to flatten out the list for us. So that flattens it into a 1D list, and that is pretty much it for our radix sort. Let's give this a run and see how she works. Run all, boom, okay. So we did indeed get back a fully sorted list. Let's try a little more complex sort here. Let's create a longer test case. Uh, let's call this B equals, um, let's create a list of integers i for i in range, let's call it a million. So we'll have a million integers from 1 to a million or 0 to a million. Let's see, we're going to use the shuffle function. So we'll do from random import shuffle. That's an in-place in uh, random sort or shuffle. Just like shuffle and deck cards. We're going to short shuffle deck B. And so we don't need to reassign it to B. We just, like I said, it's an in place. So all we got to do is shuffle B. And then B will be in shuffled order after that. Uh, so then we'll call our radix sort on B. B equals radix of B. And then what's the second one? Oh, let's see. Yeah, we need to get num digits. Boom, but we're going to change that to B, right? Okay, that is it. And then instead of printing the entire list, B has a million items in it. Um, let's just print like the first five or six and the last five or six. So B. And I'll print the first six and the last six items. And let's see. So let's see. We should be able to sort a million items. Let's see how that works. Whoops. I just need to put uh, parentheses around our range here. Try that again. It's thinking, oh wow, so it's done already. So it does it pretty quick. It sorts a million items pretty fast. And I think you could actually bump that up to 10 million or 100 million and you'll be surprised at how quick it is because once it grabs resources from your computer, uh, the sort actually runs very fast. So that's Radix sort, and it's a very, very efficient, fast sorting algorithm for integers. Could you use this for strings? Well, sure, you probably could. You'd have to do some modifications. Uh, first, you'd need 26 buckets instead of 10 buckets, right? Because you have 26 uh, alpha characters. And then on top of that, you'd probably want to start from the left. So you'd need to modify your algorithm so that it works from left to right rather than right to left. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.